unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Anthony Joshua says that Tyson Fury is just another opponent to him. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash app, and the Patreon family. We work it. Now, make sure you guys head over to Patreon, sign up. The link is in the description box. You'll see an affiliate section, and it helps the channel. But there's different perks for the Patreon, and I'm going to shift some of the content over there. You can become a Patreon member or sign up for YouTube memberships. Hit the join button next to the subscribe button. Either platform got some things in store. Now, another great way to support the channel is click the link in the description. Get ESPN Plus, the app, tons of original content. They have, you know, an endless catalog, really, of great things. I personally have the app. They got exclusives, archives of UFC and boxing fights that are licensed through ESPN and whatnot. So if you want to get ESPN Plus, consider that link in the description does help the channel. You can get it as a standalone app or combine it. Get ESPN Plus, Hulu and Disney Plus in a bundle. All three apps, one price, $12.99. Now, Anthony Joshua, he just did a recent interview. He's been doing some interviews lately and he made an interesting comment so i wanted to talk about it in this interview with british gq so over there in the uk this is what joshua had to say about tyson fury quote i'm here to make history i'm fired up fury is just another opponent at the end of the day he said fury is just another opponent dang i'm looking at fury like he's just another fighter in terms of spectacle trash talking two juggernauts two juggernauts coming together i can't wait so i got a couple quick things to say about that one the clout chase from eddie hearn and team joshua has been vicious you know if i'm being so honest like i always am on my channel all in the video over here on Death Row East, new media, we control the narrative. This is a big cloud chase from DAZN, DAZN, a lot of DAZN fighters, not all, but some, and including Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua. I'm really starving for answers at this point to see why Anthony Joshua is constantly mentioning a fight with Tyson Fury now that it's not going to happen next you see what i'm saying like for example tyson fury and anthony joshua are both from england facts so they're both from the uk facts tyson fury was relevant in boxing and turned pro in boxing before anthony joshua facts tyson fury had some issues outside the ring drug use weight gain depression etc so he kind of fell from favor and disappeared into you know the depths of despair or whatever and during that time wilder you know in america was making a lot of noise and joshua more importantly in the uk was taking over he was selling out the o2 arena and then that got too big and then he fought klitschko so and he knocked him out something tyson fury didn't do and it was a much more exciting fight so joshua started to get big so my thing is this if he's all big and brody and saying that Tyson Fury is just another opponent, why did it take for two Wilder Fury fights? They just went off and did their own thing and now have a third fight on the books. Triggered rematch clause from Deontay Wilder and his team, which he's confirmed, right? And now Joshua is showing all this interest in Tyson Fury. You know, it really reminds me of the scenario where there's two kids, two little kids at a table and, you know, they're just minding their own business or whatever and there's a toy like let's say a gi joe there's a gi joe 
and it's just been sitting there. Neither one is concerned about the G.I. Joe doll, and the friend goes to pick up the G.I. Joe doll to start playing with it. Now, all of a sudden, the owner of the toy, the other kid, Kid A, is like, hey, give me that back. That's my toy. You see what I'm saying? And that's what it reminds me of in this Joshua situation. Now, all of a sudden, when someone shows interest in your toy, you're interested again. So this whole time when that toy's just been sitting there idly for 45 minutes, an hour, and nobody was bothered, but the, the moment somebody showed interest, then now all of a sudden you're interested. You know, and it's funny how that works human nature-wise. I've even seen it in relationships where, you know, a guy treats a girl bad or, or whatever, and she really likes the guy, so she sticks around, but then she grows tired of, of the guy kind of not making her a priority and making her just an option. So the girl starts seeing and dating other people and then she falls for somebody else and starts seriously dating and distancing herself from the dude. And then I've seen dudes go crazy, like trying to get that girl. Like this is the same chick that you really fronted on. You see what I'm saying? You were fronting on this chick and acting like she was a consolation prize, you know, second place. And then now when she finds somebody and she moves on in a relationship, now all of a sudden you turn into Fatal Attraction Stalker 2000 and you want to show interest in the girl that you had your chance with and you had dibs on in the first priority. That's exactly what this situation reminds me of with Anthony Joshua. Because for the life of me, I cannot understand how Joshua, again, he rose to prominence a lot when Fury was out of boxing. You know, he was in his dry spell of destitute or whatever was wrong with him with the mental depression, right? But as soon as he comes back, why did it take for Deontay, the bronze bomber, water ex WBC champion of the world? <laughs> why did it take for him to get on board, get with Fury's people, Frank Warren, and then top rank, you know, when he joined and make it do what it do and fight Tyson Fury, not once, but twice and going on a third time. Now, all of a sudden, Joshua, who has been in the world of boxing, I hate to say, but he's been kind of forgotten about since the Andy Ruiz pair of fights for obvious reasons, his stock dropped because he got bashed up in the first fight, which he admits, you know, he, he said that in the fight, this is, he says, I got beat. I got beaten to a pulp and had to pull myself back together. This is the same interview. That's a direct quote from Anthony Joshua. So he's admitting that Andy Ruiz beat him to a pulp like orange juice bars. So you know, it's just kind of weird behavior, in my opinion, from Anthony Joshua to and Eddie Hearn to continually talk about a mythical Tyson Fury fight and show this level of interest in fighting Tyson Fury. And as a UK compatriot, you could have had probably first dibs before Wilder because it would be a big fight for British boxing. But now that he's tied up with Wilder and Wilder's standing his ground like, yo, I want that rematch. Oh my God, I'm so frustrated. Eddie Hearn, you know, Wilder's doing his bit. And then now all of a sudden, Joshua's acting like he been wanting to fight Tyson Fury. And Fury, uh, Fury is just another opponent. You know, and now he's saying all this stuff about Fury's just another opponent. It's just weird behavior to me, you know. And the other thing that makes it weird is if we look deeper, Joshua was a couple years ago considered the man. They were trying to front on Wilder, say he only deserved a flat fee of 12.5 million and Joshua was the cash cow. So Wilder needed to take whatever was given to him and take scraps and flat purses and flat fees and all this stuff. And he's not in the driver's seat. So it was pretty much understood that Joshua was the guy to beat. And he was the guy with the, the big brand and 90,000, 100,000 at Wembley or whatever. And he had that kind of buying power or drawing power at the time and he didn't make no moves to fight Tyson Fury. So now that that has been, that empire has kind of crumbled, I really haven't even heard anybody talking about Joshua. That's that's the God honest truth. I haven't heard, the only people I hear about, talk about Joshua is a couple UK reporters and Eddie Hearn and Joshua himself, you know, occasionally saying something or being asked something. But from the world of boxing by at large, I haven't even really heard, and that's weird behavior, because he's coming off a win so i think people realize that the ruiz fights you know some of the his stock dropped in that even in the victory 
because people felt listen to bob aaron bob aaron basically mirrors everything that i've told you on my channel and he did it after i had already told you but bob aaron basically mirrors what i said he, he said that joshua looked timid and you know he lost to a guy like ruiz and then didn't want to engage and he ran you know that's what it, it looked like it looked like he was so you know he wanted to win and he did win but it just wasn't impressive you get what i'm saying it just looked like a man who was broken and that broken with more determination and at least in shape was able to carry him to a victory you see what i'm saying i think realistically andy ruiz dropped the ball humongously on himself and that's by not really preparing and being 100 percent ready and disciplined and keeping his weight down and you know just following the sticking to the script of what a champion should do i really feel I, I listen i don't have to make no excuses in boxing if a fight if i get a prediction right i get it right if i get it wrong i get it wrong i predicted ruiz would beat joshua i'm not mad or salty i'm just telling you what it is you can lie to yourself if you wish or whatever i still think andy ruiz could beat joshua stylistically he has what it takes he already did it before and he made joshua submit and if you really boil it down if you really want to get you know nitpicking you can look at it joshua's victory over ruiz was far less superior to ruiz's victory over joshua you know if we're looking at fight versus fight with those two names intertwined i think the biggest disservice was done in the gym for andy ruiz and it looked like at one point he was losing weight but he just broke you know the fame and having access some people you just can't give access to more money and whips and cars that you know that changes their whole focus and, and stuff like that and hopefully it's a wake-up call i think ruiz is a good fighter but you know he, him going with canelo that that's another reason he could end up beating joshua in the rematch it, it, bottom line is this i'm not sold on joshua's last performance based on his last two performances that's you know the saying in boxing you're only as good as your last performance you know you're what have you done for me lately type of sport and to me joshua is he quit in one fight got dropped four times in a fight where he was winning the round so that was a huge mistake then he got it right and, and beat ruiz but there was more factors involved and that's the participation and dedication or lack thereof for andy ruiz you know you would be foolish to omit that from your assessment and you just say oh shut up joshua beat him you know and then act like we didn't see what we didn't see it's kind of like koto versus sergio martinez i picked martinez to win you know prime for prime i think martinez would blow and i like koto but i think he'll blow him out the water but you know he caught him at a great time and then martinez knee was all shot to hell first time he got hurt and dropped and you know his leg was shattered to bits or whatever so it is, it is it is what it is but it played out how it was supposed to you know so that's my thoughts i don't think tyson fury is just an opponent you know he looked good versus wilder did his thing and there's a lot of people who even believe that wilder is a deadlier style even with the second fight now it played out than anthony joshua so i just feel ultimately joshua he's staying with the same team at least to our knowledge he's he has a lot of ground to cover for people to believe in it. You even hear guys like Hugh Brad Pulev, who at one point when Joshua was on the incline and looking like almost devastating as a heavyweight, Hugh Brad Pulev looked like he didn't want no smoke. Now you hear Hugh Brad Pulev in the mix at age 40 kind of talking greasy and Bob Arum saying Hugh Brad Pulev is gonna stop him. So Joshua has taken a massive, a massive hit in terms of his profile and the perception. And that's what boxing is about. Like one or two fights can do that, can forever change. You look at Julio Cesar Chavez versus Meldrick Taylor. One fight has really changed Meldrick Taylor's trajectory. And I really feel that's kind of what we're seeing. We'll see what happens and what Joshua, he says is gonna be the rebirth and all that stuff. But um, it's hard and it's gonna take time to get back what you lost. Cause you look at like guys like Gennady Golovkin. I think Golovkin, a lot of people, when they seen him with Kell Brook and then Danny Jacobs arguably beat him and then Canelo first fight was a draw and then Canelo walked him down in the rematch. You know, you start seeing that, it's gonna be hard to reverse the clock and make people pretend, you know, fear. It's, if you have fear from the beginning, 
then that's what it is. But if you have fear from the beginning and then people stop fearing you, it's kind of hard to get that same level of fear back. You know, it's hard to explain. But I look at like the 90s death row. Any of your artists want to remain artists? Don't want to have to worry about the executive producer. All in the video, dancing, come to death row. People fear Suge, like what, what would happen? I mean, he's a huge 6566 six, six, imposing figure, blood affiliated, smoking a cigar, bald head, beard, you know? And he looked like no nonsense. But then later in life, they had that barber that like knocked him out. And then you see people kind of tried Suge a little bit. You see what I'm saying? But ain't nobody was doing that 95, 96 Suge. You see, nobody was running up on Suge at that time. So it, when, when stuff like that happens, when you're in the invincible aura, it, it's hard to shake that. And then when that gets stripped away for whatever reason, you look more human, it's kind of hard to get back, you know? It's like Lucas, Lucas Matisse, Danny Garcia made him look human when they fought on the Mayweather Canelo undercard. He looked real human. But before that, he was the machine and all this, you know? And Danny Garcia had his eye looking watery and looking like a vagina and all this stuff and dropped him he just got beat up so it's like you see his next fight he struggled with john molina who was moving up in weight at the time and john molina dropped him twice before later getting stopped and then you see victor postal later beat him in pacquiao and so on and so forth but matisse at the time before the garcia fight he was smoking everybody at 140 including talented guys like lamont peterson so you know i think josh was kind of in that same realm of even like a lucas matisse is like you have such a bad night it, it forever changes your trajectory and how you're viewed because before joshua he, bro he he was looking he's six six diesel looking like action jackson aj you know oh man you know aj action jackson he was looking ripped and huge and knocking people out and had klitschko's head looking like a pez dispenser but then you you fought a five-week replacement andy ruiz with t-rex arms and he bodies you, you know? So I don't think Tyson Fury is just an opponent. I think that's something he's saying to sell the fight or hype himself up, but I, I would definitely favor Tyson Fury to beat Joshua at this point. I still think Wilder is a tougher style because he could just shut your lights off. Wilder could just be losing and shut your lights off. So if you didn't bully him or if he's better prepared for Tyson Fury trying to walk him down, Wilder can, he's just too dangerous with single punches. I think Fury versus Joshua is more of a boxing match. You know, I'm not even going to talk about this no more because Joshua and Eddie Hearn keep clout chasing. And it doesn't look like with this pandemic and Wilder refusing to step out of the way and Q Brad Pulliv refusing to step out of the way, it doesn't look like we're going to get that fight next. So, you know, it's not even worth overly talking about it. Let me know what you guys think and how I did in this particular video. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you love what I'm doing, smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.